Hello and welcome to Planet Zoo where I try to recreate the Antwerp Zoo in Belgium in the game. In today's episode I'm gonna be working on the Bird Palace. The Bird Palace was designed in 1893 by architect Emil Thielens and built in neoclassicist style. Due to changes over the years, the only remaining part from his original design is the facade and the large aviary on the southern side of the building. The original interior of the bird palace was arranged as a museum with bird cages lined along the walls. During the Second World War, the building was heavily damaged however, prompting a complete overhaul of the way birds were exhibited. In 1948, architect René Grossemans Ren uh, renovated the building and rearranged a section of the exhibits according to the principles of the Antwerp cage system where birds are separated from visitors not by glass or chainmail but by a difference in lighting. In 1975 the next big change occurred when the bird palace was expanded on its northern and western sides with a series of exterior aviaries. So right now I am building the facade and I am uh, using a lot of classical elements here, or uh, classic elements here, basically to replicate that basic, uh, or that neoclassicist uh, look of the facade. Um, as you can see on screen right now, this is how the uh, front of the bird palace currently looks. Uh, there's a lot of small um, or nice little details. Fortunately, within the current restraints of the game, I wasn't able to replicate them all. For example, uh, the mosaic-like things above the windows couldn't really find uh, something similar. But all in all, I think this worked out uh, quite well. Um, I had some <laughs> some issues or some different um, experiments with this arch here. Uh, I tried using this method. Uh, to rotate uh, this piece, but uh, didn't really look that good. Uh, so I decided to find uh, an alternative, which I found in the uh, classic rounded thing there that I put in just now. I decided to make this a bit wider to fit that uh, classic piece and put in the door back. Now I was uh, really hoping to use that um, half circle glass there, but that was just too big so I had to basically make a custom window by using these East Asia uh, wood pieces. Speaking about East Asia, well the new um, Southeast Asia DLC has come out today. Um, <laughs> I hope that this is in fact the day that uh, the video is uploaded, uploaded that the DLC gets. Um, uploaded as well or uh, put on Steam. Yeah, I'm really excited about a couple of stuff not only in the uh, Southeast Asia DLC but also in the free update that goes along with it. For example the custom billboards you, you can actually put in videos or GIFs I don't know uh, which one of the two it is but you can basically have a moving image um, that you put in uh, a custom billboard. That will mean that we can basically make like fake aquariums because you can put in an image or a video of some uh, fish swimming around and you can use that as basically a fake aquarium uh, if you put that against a wall. So uh, I'm looking forward to using that uh, when we get to the aquarium. That will be like near the end of the zoo. By then maybe we have a uh, an aquarium DLC, who knows. But yeah, if we do not have that yet, um, I can always use the, the billboards with the videos. So you can see me here putting in that mosaic. I uh, was trying to find something that looked similar. There wasn't really something that looked similar, so I went with the um, bee fowl, the image of the bee fowl there, because that was a bird, and I thought it's a bird palace, so maybe I should stick with a bird. Now I don't know if I'll, uh, because I recorded this before the uh, free update and the DLC, I don't know if there's any billboards um, that are like small enough to fit in there to have the exact uh, mosaic in there. I don't think there there are. I think the smallest is like um, four meters or something. I don't know. Like they they are quite big. But then we are have this um, little side entrance here, uh, which is another way the visitors can enter the bird palace. So we have the main entrance and then the side entrance which, which is also connected with a path to the main path on the right there. 
So right now I'm using these painted uh, bricks here. Um, I'll basically use that all around the building. I don't know what it is, but it's like this painted brick is like a classic look for... Uh, I would say th stuff built in the 60s or, or 70s or something, or right after the Second World War or something, because it's really, it's really, it really stands out, the kind of brick they used there. Now I use this um, roof here, and I basically use this corrugated metal, uh, adjusted the color slightly to fit it in, because it was not wide enough to use a full-on roof piece there. And then um, I basically copy everything on the other side there, uh, because now we can move on to the next part, um, which I believe is the expansion that was made in the 70s, if I'm correct. Um, so the expansion in the 70s uh, on the, what is it, the western side, the northern and western side, let me check real quickly. Um, but yeah, basically with the... Uh, with the exterior aviaries and stuff like that, uh, and the the um, Antwerp uh, cage system as well. So yeah, that was the uh, or the Antwerp cage system was in the 1940s. Uh, but the thing we're doing now uh, on the northern and western side is indeed the 1970s. So yeah, we have this uh, nice little curvature there, and that basically extends the original bird palace closer to um, to the other buildings that we already have there, like the Flamingo restaurant and stuff like that. And uh, I'm basically using these plaster walls because <laughs> I think those are the best like set in the entire game, like plaster and the plaster pieces that you can use to basically make walls look like whatever you want it to look. Um, right here I'm doing this uh, glass wall because it's like... Um, it's like an habitat or an exhibit that's like visible from the outside but also from the inside so when we go in the live game you will actually see uh, how that connects uh, to the inside as well. It's really um, a thing to keep in mind when we build like uh, buildings with interiors is to have some kind of um, roof that uh, or a glass roof to let some light in. I'm lucky with my uh, recreation here because um, the actual building in the zoo has glass has, has a glass in its roof, so I can use that for some natural lighting. Because, well, let's be honest, this game isn't really made for uh, doing interiors. Like everything is so dark and uh, messes up quite easily. Yeah, now we're doing like the actual exterior um, aviary. I don't know if aviary is like the right word here because it's really enclosed in like uh, this, as you can see in this wall. Um, yeah, I'm using the same technique as I used before, basically uh, putting in an actual barrier inside of the wall to have that uh, aviary look there. Now I will go back and uh, change that interior wall there, but right now I'm just doing all the outside aviaries, uh, exterior aviaries. And I think it extends quite uh, quite a while, a while there, um, or quite far there, because they house quite a lot of birds on the exterior as well. So this bird palace, I don't know what it is, but they really love using or having a lot of birds in the Antwerp Zoo. Like they have the bird palace, but they also have like a uh, a walkthrough aviary uh, with buffaloes. They also have another kind of walkthrough aviary with what is it like um, like bigger water birds I think with uh, near the hippo enclosure and we have the parrot aviary which I already built in an earlier episode so yeah they have a lot of aviaries like spread around the zoo which really really makes me wonder um, why like Frontier has done an aviary DLC yet because I, I don't think Antwerp is unique in this uh, sense that it has a lot of birds I think a lot of zoos have a lot of birds. Uh, I think one of the first animals in, like historically, in zoos were birds. So I don't know why Frontier hasn't made a bird or aviary DLC yet, other than it may be difficult in terms of mechanics. But anyways, 
Um, this building kind of has also a second floor, but I don't think that's uh, accessible to visitors, so I didn't really make that ac accessible for uh, zookeepers either, so we just have that as a decorative uh, second floor. Now we're here on the roof uh, above the main building. Now the way I did this roof um, also had its ramifications for the interior later on, because those uh, glass elements in the roof uh, basically mean that uh, <laughs> where the glass is above you have more light inside of the building in the interior. So I kind of had to adjust my uh, interior enclosures how, um, like relative to where the glass in the roof was. So right there we have all the exterior, um, exterior aviaries done on this side and uh, then it was time to put in some plants there an edge because that's where the path like goes and now we are on the uh, northern more or what is it no it's not northern I think it's eastern eastern side eastern side of the building uh, I think which is the like curved outside or exterior aviary I had a couple of different tries with how to make it curved try to use the barrier technique I used in earlier episodes to have like curved shapes um, but yeah, this is one of the areas uh, that um, was already in the original aviary or bird palace, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's uh, quite an old part of the bird palace and it's quite unique. I mean, this curved shape um, really gives it its own like character and yeah, the, the exterior uh, habitat. I think that worked out quite well, like I used this, uh, it's always like this barrier or a concrete barrier underneath and then the uh, regular barrier as the actual chain mill that or yeah, the fence that keeps the animals in the aviary and then the glass pieces on top to give it that aviary look. Now it, it would be really cool if we had just like it, it doesn't even have to be a, like a big update the uh, the bird DLC or something just we need like the, the same glass scenery pieces we have that I use here, but instead of glass, like chainmail and, and meshes and stuff like that, that would be just so great if we had that, because that would change up a lot um, of the ways we did our aviary builds and stuff like that, because now it's all in glass and it kind of looks uh, unrealistic. But now we're coming up to the end of the speed build, um, just doing some details like the roofs, uh, like this w uh, back wall here, which is just some uh, glass here, and yeah, basically the backdrop of that exterior aviary, and then um, all that is left is just copying that, <laughs> pasting it over and over again, and then of course we have the perhaps the most important thing of this build. Like I always say, when you put a roof on something, it's finished, but in the case of aviaries uh, that's not the case. In the case of aviaries you can really make it look more beautiful by having like foliage and, and I tried to put in some water here but the terrain just wouldn't look nice like it, it you could see the polygons kind of like I don't know how to describe it can, you can you can kind of see it but yeah I decided not to use the water and then I had this rock and um, I was just dot technique I think I got it from Judd Gorin in his recreation of uh, Pixabergen uh, in the Netherlands he uses these uh, font pieces to make to kind of imply that those are uh, bird nests or bird holes or something where the birds actually um, can go into and stuff like that so yeah I'm putting in some foliage in this uh, habitat because as I will show you in just a sec in the in the actual game footage I put in an animal here and um, yeah, just to have visitors attracted to that habitat. But then on the other uh, exterior aviaries, I just put in some uh, divisions there or to, to kind of have different aviaries and put in some plants, try to have each piece of the aviary or each aviary uh, have different plants, have a different look. Uh, try to compare it to real images I had. Yeah, um, that brings me to the end of the speed build here. I also did some interior work off camera and I will show everything in the 
uh, live game now. So, see you there. And we're now in the game to have a more detailed look at everything that we've done. On camera, but also off camera, as you can see. This whole entrance uh, to the bird palace, I did uh, some work off camera, mainly with the plants here and uh, some sa statues. Uh, for example, this uh, dodo statue. Well, in the actual zoo, it is a statue of an owl. I also put in uh, some peafowls right here. Uh, to have some actual birds in the bird palace now in Antwerp so they don't have these bee fowls in this uh, habitat here but I thought it's better than having nothing in here uh, and they actually give a bit more life to this side of the zoo but if we go back here because um, don't don't look at that that's a, a little bit of a sneak peek for next episode actually I'm already working on that but we can actually go inside of the bird palace here and I have done some work off camera to um, put in some implied habitats for birds. We have like this, uh, let me put on my light because <laughs> there's something with, the, with this game that doesn't like interior lighting and stuff like that. This is like a bird, a desert bird implied habitat. Now uh, I did look on the Steam Workshop to see if they had like uh, birds or fake birds I could use but didn't find really anything most of them were large and we'll actually use in one of the next builds yeah, then we have this jungle jungle bird implied habitat I really like this technique of putting in a door and then <laughs> sliding it back okay uh, what's this okay I don't care about that so <laughs> they can actually use this door like it's it's part of the decor and stuff like that so that's a really good uh, cool technique you have this one in the corner uh, another jungle one but without the background and with these like uh, roots in the wall and I use I put in a I think these are beetles if I can actually oh, find one oh, there's one this is like a, a beetle uh, exhibit so people actually go into the bird uh, palace uh, well these are now uh, staff workers but like actual people will go in here to have a look at them then we have this special area uh, it's supposed to be dark in here I don't I uh, didn't fi uh, finish this yet but what is in the Antwerp Zoo right here is some th type of special thing they have these bird uh, exhibits here they are not separated with glass from the visitors but it's just because this is dark and there's light over here the birds won't actually go outside of their exhibit so I tried to simulate that with like um, the, the black plaster walls here I think there's some actual people yeah th there's some actual people looking in, in this uh, exhibit here so they will actually go in here now and then we go all the way around here. There's a little uh, feeding working station here for the zookeepers. And then there's a door here that's an entrance to this uh, exhibit here. So you can actually see. Um, I think these are curassows that are supposed to be in here. Now I did an actual entrance to this uh, to this habitat because I was trying to get uh, curassows as a mod to work, but I haven't figured it out uh, just yet I was trying to use the p-files as a base but yeah I haven't gotten them working yet but you can actually uh, look in, in from the outside and from the inside so that's actually something quite cool then over on this wall um, there's also some things that I did not finish yet I was also thinking about using habitats here or uh, exhibits here but the problem is like uh, like this terrain is elevated over here in this habitat and that will cause some issues with the terrain if I put exhibit here but yeah the interior is actually quite finished compared to my other buildings um, and then of course we have uh, like uh, oh yeah there's also this like this is some kind of uh, thing they put here to thank like people who donated to the zoo and who adopted or companies who donated or people who donated and adopted like animals that's what meters and peters means in Dutch it's like people who adopted 
animals and as there's like all these uh, little pieces of car or cards here that have the names of the people and companies that sponsor the zoo so yeah that's located there and I think I think it really adds something special to the zoo um, now we have this familiar area we have here and then of course we have the uh, exterior exterior aviaries now I'm really excited for the next DLC which comes out like uh, the 30th of March which is probably gonna be <laughs> the day this video gets uh, uploaded or something I don't know yet when this will be uploaded but yeah probably the same day uh, but at the time of recording this it hasn't launched yet and then I showed this earlier but we have the beef owls here in the other exterior uh, aviary so don't look at that that's for the next episode there in the distance um, but I have another uh, message about the Jubilee building over here. Now there was some news that the Antwerp Zoo is not going to do the overhaul of this building as it was intended. I think it's mainly due to financial issues uh, they have due to COVID related stuff. And they're actually gonna, or the sea lions will actually uh, go to different zoos, I think in Germany and the United Kingdom. So that's kind of sad that they will be gone from the Antwerp Zoo, but I think I will keep the Jubilee building in my recreation as they intended it. Uh, because, well, for one, I put all the work in it, and I think it turned out quite nicely. And second of all, um, I think the, the Jubilee building and the Aqua Forum are gonna uh, take some time, like at least two or three maybe even five years until they actually can do what they intended to do and by then the series will already be over most likely so there's no point in waiting and see to see what they will do with the building if I can actually have already something based off a plan they had. Yeah I really think that's a shame because like this this is quite a nice area okay it may not fit in that well with the spectacled bears and the the uh, red pandas over here and then the, the big cats they have on the other side so the sea lions do not really fit in with that bunch or kind of animals they're not uh, I mean they are carnivore or I mean some kind of carnivore they are in the, I think the same um, what is it called class let me <laughs> let me check in the in the like seals and and um, so yeah, you will see that I have actual mods installed, but I don't use them. Like seals are actually in, in the, yeah, the carnivora order. The sea lions as well. So in that kind of, they could, does make sense they have sea, sea lions over here because they're also carnivores or in the same order. But yeah, they, they, it, I, it's not known yet what they will do now with the Jubilee building. Some people have speculated they might have, uh, might put a giant other in here which my I may do in the future like once I build the actual seal enclosure and I don't have a sea lion mod I may put in a giant others in here that might look quite cool uh, maybe I'll add in some more foliage to give it a more natural like South American jungle look or something other people have also speculated or, or suggested that they do some kind of um, like Madagascar type uh, theme in here with like because there was uh, as I said in the previous episode there was an area dedicated to nocturnal animals and that could fit in with like Madagascar team and if they do the entire building in that style that might be quite cool but yeah, I think they they won't really get rid of the water or the aquarium related stuff in this building I think they have all that infrastructure and it's quite expensive so they won't just <laughs> completely get rid of it because they paid a lot of money for it. Of course it's possible they will get rid of it just because of that reason that it's expensive to maintain and stuff like that. But yeah this area has a really good potential to become like uh, quite an exciting part of the zoo in the future but right now in the Antwerp Zoo it's quite empty because of the construction works like the, the Formosan or um, spectacle bears are not there the red panda is not there but 
Yeah, of course, I, I like to have them in here just because more animals equals more fun. And I really hope in some future kind of DLC uh, we get uh, birds and aviary mechanics because this building really feels... Although it's quite cool to have built it and like decorated all the aviaries and enclosures, it feels empty. I have the peafowls in there, but still, it, it kind of feels empty. Anyways, but next episode, we'll, um, I'm not going to show it uh, quite yet. Uh, you can see some, some slight things over here, but next episode is going to be the uh, ape, the big ape uh, building, and uh, the ape valley, which has the chimpanzees and the gorillas in them. Uh, I think Antwerp Zoo is actually one of the only zoos, or in fact the only zoo with an eastern, what is it, a eastern gorilla or something? What's their actual name? Like, Eastern Lowland Gorilla. Like, the game has Western Lowland Gorillas, but I think one of the gorillas in the Antwerp Zoo is actually an Eastern one. And it's the only one in European zoo zoos, I think. Or zoos, in fact. Uh, uh, oh. They are thirsty. Do they not have access to... Is there not a... Do the zookeepers not? Can they not get there? Maybe? Because if that is the case, I can just um, like put in uh, what's this? Get <laughs> on! I'm sorry. That sounded like a that song. Get up! Get on! Okay, yeah. I'm gonna delete that one. Uh, because there's no... They, they can't access that apparently. Come on. Oh, isn't it actually part of... Uh, that's so annoying. Yeah, sorry about this. Um, but the water pipe, they don't actually need access from uh, a zookeeper. They just automatically fill with water. Which you can use if zookeepers are stupid enough and can't access uh, like certain areas. But anyways, um, next episode we'll do the ape house, um, <laughs> which you have seen there <laughs> as a kind of sneak peek, but we'll go into detail uh, for that in the next episode. If you like this video, please uh, give it a like, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye!